Hi, my name is Tyler Bragginton, and I'm an Applications Engineer at Hawkridge Systems. This is the third video in a three-part series on creating inspection report templates for SOLIDWORKS inspection. In the first two videos, we mapped the attributes to our report and set up conditional formatting to change the font color of our actual value column based on the pass-fail criteria. In this video, we will add a footer row to our template to ensure it will work with any size project. Our template was designed with only 11 rows in the characteristics table. As we mentioned in video one, we only need to populate the first row with mapped attributes as inspection will automatically continue to fill downward. However, in cases where we have less than 11 balloon characteristics, we will be left with empty rows. Worse yet, the majority of our projects greatly exceed 11 characteristics. The result is information overflowing from our table. To prevent this, we need our table to automatically truncate or adjust its size based on the number of characteristics. SOLIDWORKS Inspection has a feature for this, but first we must establish the footer row, the last row of our table. To do this, begin by selecting the row immediately below your table. You can see I want my table to end here in row 21, and this should be the first row to follow the table, right where the printed name and signature is called out. So by selecting that entire row, I can then go to the Formulas tab and select the Name Manager. The Name Manager allows me to apply a name to this entire row calling it the footer row. That way SOLIDWORKS Inspection knows this is the row that it should adjust based on the length of the table. Let's add our new name. And we're going to call this the IX footer row with a unique three digit identifier. Format is very important here and ensure that you have it exactly as it's shown, capital IXF footer, capital R, O, W, and a three digit identifier. This identifier must be unique for each sheet in your workbook if your workbook has multiple sheets. Make sure that it refers to the entire row and then hit OK. Now we've named that row IX footer row 001. This way, again, inspection will know that's the row it should adjust up or down based on the number of characteristics. That's all we have to do for our table to truncate. Let's test out our entire report. I'll go ahead and save our template and close it down. Switching into SOLIDWORKS inspection, you can see I'm ready to export this project. First, I need to go ahead and point inspection to this new template we've created. You can see it's not in my current list of templates. To add a new template to this list, I click on the green plus sign. Then I need to navigate to my standalone template we've created, HRS inspection report standalone. Ensure that you have this selected as the active report. And if your report contains multiple pages, make sure you check the all sheets checkbox so that it maps information to all the sheets rather than just the last active sheet. Check your image settings if you are copying over images, and then we can test it with an export. Replace my existing report. And let's take a look at how we did. We can see our information in the title area has been correctly populated as well as all of our information has been added and we've exceeded 11 characteristics and sure enough it stops right where we want it to before the row printed name signature so our ix footer row worked let's test our conditional formatting starting with this linear value let's start recording some results maybe we got this one perfect it turns green to show us that it passes if we fall outside of the window we'll see that it turns red signifying that that value fails that's it our report is complete. That's it for part three of our video series on creating inspection report templates for SOLIDWORKS inspection. Be sure to check out parts one and two if you haven't already. You should now be ready to design your own custom report templates for SOLIDWORKS inspection. Thanks for watching.